I think the real question is what makes what makes it normal and where did they get the name from? I think if you look at the ingredients of 0.9% um, sodium chloride, you'll see that the only thing truly normal about it um, is its osmolality at 308 milliatoms per liter, which is the closest to, or really relatively close to plasma compared to maybe some other fluids. Um, but it's only made up of sodium and chloride, and both of them are in higher concentrations than what is in plasma. And notably, the amount of chloride is extremely high relative to our plasma volume. Um, so I, I tend to use the term abnormal saline, actually, to help um, students and even practitioners remember clinically that there is some significant harm when you consider using that fluid in particular. Um, the high chloride load really contributes to a very acidotic pH. Um, a bag of a bag of 0.9% sodium chloride has a pH of a little over five, so it is very acidotic. And because of that high chloride load, um, when you administer it to patients, even as little as maybe one liter, you can that that chloride concentration can considerably um, increase a patient's serum chloride and even lead to a hyperchloremic non-anion gap metabolic acidosis. And this is one of the reasons that um, it's postulated to lead to patients developing an acute kidney injury and a need for renal replacement therapy. Um, and then some studies may even suggest that there is a mortality um, impact at different time points in hospital 30-day, you know, maybe 90-day mortality. Um, some of the early studies that really identified this as a problem were in healthy volunteers where they gave patients um, um, some 0.9% sodium chloride compared to balance, some other balanced crystalloids. And the, the patients that received the 0.9% sodium chloride or abnormal saline, it actually took them longer to make urine um, than the counter, the, the other cohort that received balanced crystalloid. Uh, 